Hey guys, welcome to yet another episode of Conversations Kanisa. And uh, as we normally say, Conversations is that channel that is going to guarantee you an alluring motor vehicle experience. And today we are delighted to have a vehicle that you guys really asked for, especially after the review of the Nissan Terra, and that is the Isuzu MUX. It's actually the new uh, Isuzu MUX, the current generation of the MUX in the Kenyan market. And if you want to see this car, uh, you can uh, view this car at the NCBA KMI Motor Show happening uh, this month from the 15th to the 17th of September at uh, the Sarit Center Expo Hall. So you'll be able to see this car and many other cars on display. You'll get to learn a little bit about them and also get to learn about their price tag but for now let's get up close and candid with the isuzu mux i'll be your host eric wakabi eric with a ck do follow me at a personal level on facebook twitter and instagram and also uh, remember to like this video share and also subscribe to the channel The Isuzu MUX is based on the Isuzu D-Max, just like the Nissan Terra is based on the Nissan Navara. Um, the Toyota Fortuna is based on the Toyota Hilux. The Mitsubishi Pajero Sport is based on the L200. The Ford Everest is based on the Ford Ranger. Uh, and these... Uh, SUVs that are based on pickups have really become common in the global market, not only in Kenya but in the world at large. And this is because of their versatility and their off road capability, as well as very good fuel economy so the mux this current generation of the mux is denoted by the code the rj05 and it comes in two major variants uh, we have a 1.9 liter variant and a three liter top spec variant we are going to get up close and candid with them uh, shortly after we talk about the prima facie the mux is actually stunning i love the current generation of the mux i reckon it does look better compared to the previous generation and it does not only look better you know there are cars that look good from far but they are far from good well this one looks good <laughs> from close proximity from far and it is also good and le let's talk about its legacy of reliability as we talk about what is under the hood of the isuzu MUX. Before we talk about this engine over here, if you buy the Isuzu MUX from Isuzu East Africa, it will come in tropicalized to battle with the African and Kenyan climate. Uh, and tropicalization happens, you know, in so many aspects from the engine, the cooling system, the suspension. And one of these fine days we are going to look at, uh, compare a tropicalized unit from a non-tropicalized unit. So one of the advantages of getting this one zero mileage is that it will come with a warranty and also the tropicalization aspect. It's, it has an engine that is even tolerant to the fuel that we have here in Kenya. Now let's get to talk about the engine. If you're buying an Isuzu MUX, it comes in two major variants, a 1.9 liter variant and a 3 liter variant. Now the 1.9 liter variant is more of the basic spec or the lower trim of the Isuzu MUX. The 1.9 liter engine is the RZ4E TC, 1900 cc's of displacement and uh, you know, it, it's a four-cylinder uh, turbocharged engine and fuel is delivered to the engine through a uh, common rail and high-pressure nozzles. It's a very economical engine with very good power figures because it, has, it can produce around 147 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque. However, the holy grail of the Isuzu MUX is the one that comes with the 3-liter 4JJ3 TCX. Now let's talk about this engine. It has been tried and tested on the D-Max in the Kenyan market space and it's quite powerful because it produces 187 horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque. Well again it's a four-cylinder uh, turbocharged engine and it's not only turbocharged it boasts of a variable geometry turbocharger. So, so, so if you're buying an MUX, if I was to buy an MUX, yes the 1.9 liter would be um, 
a more economical variant of the engine uh, but uh, for me i would go towards the three liter because it gives you power it gives you lots of torque and you know there is also that aspect of reliability and talking about fuel economy the 1.9 liter engine on the MUX is very economical but that does not make the 3 liter 4JJ3 TCX uneconomical because this 3 liter if you drive it properly it will give you all the way to 14 kilometers to the liter. That is if you are a good driver and you keep the revs low and even when it comes to keeping the revs low this vehicle has sufficient low end torque it gets to 100 kilometers per hour without you know over revving it with you know with minimal effort and that pushes the fuel economy figures of this engine to you know to levels that we could not expect from a three liter diesel engine how is that power transmitted to the wheels well if you're buying the mux it comes in automatic transmission yes that is for the kenyan market space uh on the on the kenyan market space i i'm not very sure if we have manuals but on other markets like thailand you there is the possibility of uh, finding a manual transmission but if you're buying it zero mileage you will get it in uh, a six-speed automatic transmission the gearbox on it is is, is the iSyn revtronic automatic gearbox if you look at the engine you will tell that it is longitudinally mounted and this tells you that this car has rear wheel drive bias however uh, through the transfer case you can be able to engage four wheel and drive the front wheels uh, by you know engaging it to four wheel drive through the through a dial yeah, so it's electronically shifted and you can shift it to four-wheel drive on the fly. Sawa sawa. So you, again, in other markets, you can find the MUX in two-wheel drive configuration. But I always ask the question, why would you need to buy an SUV that is two-wheel drive? So if I'm buying an MUX, I'll go for the three-liter and one that comes in four-wheel drive, just like this one. Let's talk about the suspension of the vehicle and uh, one thing that you get to notice when you look at the side profile of the MUX is the impressive ground clearance that will take you through uh, the treacherous African and Kenyan terrain when you're going for your adventure. Well, uh, the MUX sits on size 18 wheels with alloys coming in as a standard. Uh, at the front you have conventional double wishbone suspension and then you have coils at the rear and a solid rear axle. So the major difference between this vehicle and the D-Max, remember I told you that it's based on the D-Max. Now the D-Max has uh, some overslung leaf springs at the back, but since this one is comfort oriented and it's passenger oriented, it has the coil springs at the rear. So it's a more comfortable uh, SUV comparing it to its sibling, the Isuzu D-Max. It comes with side steps. Yeah, because it of the clearance, you need some good aid when you're boarding the Isuzu MUX. Also, it comes with some subtle roof rails that uh, bring out that style, the dual toning. If you look at the color of the roof rails and these Isuzu badges right here, they complement each other and also the silver on the lower part of the uh, sidestep. So without further ado, let's see what luxury features does the MUX have inside because this is where the difference between the MUX and the D-Max is really brought out. But before then, let's talk about practicality then to Ingi and Dani, Sindio. SUVs are loved for being versatile, meaning they serve the aspects of being a tourer, a car that can uh, go for an adventure, a vehicle that is comfortable for your family and also a vehicle that is very, 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 very practical. And that is uh, something that the MUX has lived up to. Uh, before we open the tailgate, uh, let's go through the badging. Well, you have the MUX badge and also the 3.0 TD. So now this tells you that the what is under the hood is the 3 liter 4JJ3 uh, TCX and it's turbo diesel. So that's what TD stands for. And the rear profile of this vehicle, it's as stylish as the front. It's very, very, very sleek. And that is something that Isuzu has done to take the MUX to the next level in terms of design language. It's not a boring 
uh, SUV. It's one that will, you know, that one, one that you can show up for a business meeting, one that you can show up for a social gathering, and one that you can still take off road. The spoiler also adds to that style and elegance that the MUX uh, provides uh, to the eye. It's, it's a vehicle that is basically eye candy. Even compared to other uh, pickup based SUVs, it will still, you know, take the lead when it comes to looks both the front profile the side profile and the rear profile let's talk about practicality with the luxury aspects of the mux you get an electronic tailgate yeah so when you're buying an suv some of these small things add on to the convenience of uh, owning this particular car and uh, you can open it either through the touch of a button or through the key fob. It has a very, very, very good cargo space. So when you're hauling uh, cargo or when you're taking your family for that trip up country, you have ample space for luggage. And even not only your family's luggage, also if you run a business or a side hustle and you ferry around bulky stuff, it will still serve the purpose. The other unique thing on the MUX is that with the mid-sized SUVs and the full-size SUVs, we are seeing a trend in making them, you know, seat more people. And the Isuzu MUX has not been left behind since it can seat seven. And if you want to use the third row of seats, when you want to have extra passengers on the vehicle, you just remove this splitter. Ah actually quite hard to remove it but anyway you can remove it and make good use of the third row of seats yeah so there you have it uh, the third row however one thing about the third row of seats just like other SUVs and to be specific the mid-size SUVs you the, the third row of seats is not very comfortable especially for tall people so now let's look at the inside of the Isuzu MUX The new MUX is very, very well built when it comes to the interior. I remember I complained about uh, the interior of the other D-Max that we reviewed. Well, that has been compensated in the MUX. Very fine leather on the dashboard, uh, a very well-placed infotainment system. The cluster, very, very modern. And uh, you have a digital cluster at, in the middle and also now the the analog ones for the speedo and the tachometer as well uh, you get steering controls on the on the steering wheel and that makes it very convenient to operate the infotainment system even cruise control is set on uh, the steering wheel through buttons unlike other cars whereby you would set it through uh, a knob or uh, a stick right uh, you also get the interesting fact is you get paddle shifts on the mux so you can shift the gears manually when you when you want to get extra oomph when you're driving this uh, vehicle uh, let's talk about the four wheel drive system remember i told you that this car has four high and four low you can shift that on the fly through this uh, knob so it's it's more of electronically shifting four wheel drive and talking about another aspect of this vehicle is that you get a rear diff lock so this makes it very 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 capable when you're going off road you also get uh, auto hold auto hold well the mux is a versatile vehicle it's both for off road and on road so when you're driving this vehicle in town and you stop at the traffic lights you can always engage auto hold if you do not want to keep on depressing the brake pedal i have explained time and again how auto hold works you know in uh, in most of our videos when we have had cars that do feature auto hold then you get a few power outputs here you get the conventional one and also you get an a usb uh, power output and you can also use this to play you know music from the usb uh, for the infotainment uh, through the infotainment system let's talk about the infotainment system it's uh, 
it's it's very this one is brand new by the way ndio maana mnaona iko na karatasi and this vehicle has only done like 400 kilometers so the infotainment system is very it's 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 uh, it's touch uh, then it it has a compass when you're driving but then how many guys know how to use a compass uh, very, very interesting uh, you get android auto apple carplay you basic you know the basic uh, features you would want in a modern infotainment system so i think that's it and uh, with that also uh, the engine oh well, how do you start the engine it's through the button so it's very modern see ile akifungua bwana hii ni afob so it's push to start uh, for guys like the likes of Agina Ibrahim this this is fancy for me it's neither here nor there anyway he will come in na tutaona uh, the other interesting thing about this car is that the the daytime running lights are very 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 stylish you should you should see this car from outside also you can uh, turn off the the parking sensors because it has parking sensors all over and they are actually very 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 sensitive uh the other thing is uh, when you go to extreme off road or when you're driving and you don't want traction control on you can switch it off through this button over here uh, it also comes with the uh, you know downhill assist and other four wheel drive features that we are going to put to test uh, shortly but uh, so on this driving with the boys we have a very interesting guest somebody you should be looking forward to meeting i don't know if he will be team ibrahim or team wakabi and also we are going to do a few things with this car to see if he freaks out or not sasa because these conversations and we get to have fun and a lot of fun so let's take this car for an off-road drive with the boys. I've talked about how versatile the MUX is. So now we are about to put it to the ultimate test. And you know at conversations we don't test mildly so we are going to take it some, some through some very deep rats just to see how you know this this vehicle does not have a monocoque uh, chassis it has a body on frame and the chassis is that of the D-Max so one advantage about having a solid rear axle and a body on frame design is that you get maximum flex and we are going to put this test this car to the test it's not only an urban a mall crawler good looking and all that no this car is actually a hardcore four wheel drive uh, suv and we are going to put it to the test and we you know isuzu never disappoints when it comes to off wheel drive we know isuzu never disappoints when it comes to off road driving so belt up guys we are going for an adventure new mux you get some four wheel drive features right here this is what is called off road mode so now what does off road mode do it gives you better control of the vehicle off road and it also makes sure that you get uh, you know minimal wheel spin it's basically a driver assist feature that will enable you tackle uh, more challenging uh, situations in a better way uh, this is the diff lock as i told you uh, and this is the hill descent uh, control uh, you know button so what does it do so so hill descent it makes sure that you are not using the brake pedal but it will reduce the speed of the vehicle going uh, down a steep incline uh, naturally so we are going to test it so i'm going to engage hill descent mode you can see it on the dashboard and i'm going to let go, to let go of the pedal so look you can see siguzi brake lakini gari inateremka aje ndio hii ndio hii miguu yangu viatu zangu acha niona inua miguu bana ukati sensors keep tina hii we are descending we are descending and it's a very 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 steep incline so we are not using the brakes we are using hill descent control naona it keeps on peeping when the car is going Yes. Nice. See, it's even breaking itself. Mm -hmm. You see this is really steep. So you can't kuongeza speed, it breaks. Mm. Yeah. It's really nice off-road feature. 
but for us old school guys mm-hmm. sisi tunajua kunyonga na namba moja <laughs> these are guys like akira ibrahim eh <laughs> real holders ni kunyonga na gear <laughs> Uh-huh. Yes, so what are we doing today? Today we have you remember that review we did of the Terra. Yes. So today we are bringing the Isuzu MUX and uh, by the way you will be able to see this car at the NCBA KMI Motor Show and we, we just want to show guys what this vehicle can do. So we want to go up there. Yes, let me show them. Last time we saw us go onesha. Onesha. Yeah, this is where we want to go. Up there. Okay. <laughs> uh-huh. It is very steep, eh? Yes. So what I've done This vehicle, I've, put, I've locked the diff. I've also put it in follow. We want to see how easy it can go up there. Evidence, do you have? Eh, mwata parking sensor ina soma. Then it is too steep. Yes. Hmm. Abu onyeshe, onyeshe flex. The flex. So the tire is. Let me show them the other side, Eric. Eh? <laughs> there we go. Look at that flex. Wow. Suspension, do you? <laughs> yeah. And this is where we are going to tackle. See that tire? Good. Erika, are you ready? Yes, I'm very ready. <laughs> Too easy. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, too easy for the M- MUX. It was too easy, way too easy. I think we need a better challenge. We need a better challenge. That was too easy for the MUX. So to onyesha was say the next challenge yes. on the next video. Okay. Yes, the next short video that we are going to do. Perfect. Yes, very nice. Yes, Bwana Eric. Uh-huh. Challenge number two. Challenge number two. We are back with the MUX, and we are about to go inside. Uh, is that a trench or is it? This is like a river that has dried up. Yeah, it's a dried up river. So we are going to cross it, go all the way up, then uh, cut across the plain. I want to put it in follow. Uh-huh. Then uh, I'm going to lock my diff. Yes. Awesome. Then I'm going to put it on off-road mode. Perfect. Very nice. So. Ah yeah. So this is where we are going. So Eric is going to come down. Come down. Go all the way into this ditch. This sand. Very tricky. Come all the way up to here. And then this is where we want to tackle. These are the rocks and go up all the way to there. What do you think? No, actually this is a very very capable vehicle. You you saw the flex? Yes. And it does it so easily. So um, easily, man. I I agree when you say the D-Max is a powerhouse. Isuzu mpango mzima, man. So test number 3 is all about how the body on frame chassis, uh, the body of frame design. Body on frame ni basically mwili umewekelewa kwa chassis. And this is the D-Max chassis. So you want to see how it will behave while going on this very steep incline that has very deep ruts so kama kawaida on my four wheel drive panel i'm shifting her to follow 
locks he has locked to four low then i also want to lock my diff yes, yes my diff is also locked. let me show them what you want to tackle yes then i signal you come eh? okay. so this is what so there's a very big there you go then we go all the way up it's a very challenging place here but see how it flexes here we go this is the deep strides and then all the way to the top so we go back you ready one eric <laughs> Go back. Eh? Straight, good. Straight there. Eh? Come back up. Very good. Eh? Good. <laughs> this way, this way, this way. <laughs> Straight there. Good, good. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> ah, Majama? Yes. The people's segment. Huh? Conversations <laughs> review with the boys. Yes. And today we are privileged to have a guest joining us. Yes. And uh, he has a very interesting story. So may I have the honors of introducing him before yes, we start definitely, to, definitely. we start arguing about the whole of things. <laughs> so, so can we call this uh, uh, driving with the boys and a man? And a man. <laughs> <laughs> no, driving with the boys. Works <laughs> well. Okay, okay, driving okay. with the boys it is. Yes. So today we have uh, Lennox Mugambi. Yes. He's the group director uh, for asset finance and business solutions at uh, NCBA. And uh, he's here to experience the new Isuzu MUX. Yes. So normally we would start with Ibrahim criticizing the interior. <laughs> but today we are starting with you. <laughs> Tell us, what, what do you feel about the new MUX? The new MUX is certainly an upgrade uh, yeah. from uh, what, uh, what uh, was there. I can see uh, the finishing uh, on the dashboard leather seats uh, which uh, is comfortable I can feel the uh, I mean the, the look the look and feel is certainly much better than uh, what was there before and it looks now more like a proper SUV uh, uh, the, the nothing close to uh, maybe the traditional traditional pickup etc yes yes so I think the upgrade is, is quite good Ah, interesting. Now, Ibrahim, yes. since today you are seated at, on the rear, yes. where Mbugo would be seated yes, uh, normally. Behind. Yes, yeah. <laughs> as guys call it. Yeah, what yeah. do you think? What's your take? It's, it's a fantastic car, the back here, Okabi. Very spacious, very accommodative. Again, the premium feel of leather all around, uh, which makes makes it a very fantastic feel. Now, the AC system where you do it again, they have had this design that they've done where the air is coming from the top. 
leather on the on the on the on the door panels so can be very nice soft leather and here panyuma ni port there i'm feeling like a king <laughs> oh the charging ports we have charging ports yes be charging ports can be again oh. for convenient purposes do we have cup holders in google then we confirm ah we cup cup holders will come for, very nice where, where would you need cup holders good <laughs> question good question finally finally i have somebody who speaks my language <laughs> no when you go off road uh -huh. you need uh, some few drinks here probably no. a soda or something but when so you're cup going holders will come handy ibrahim when yes. you're going off road you're yeah. going over rats bana yeah. so whichever drink you have is bound to spill Okay. At least yeah. me, Mr. Lennox yeah. is speaking my language because yeah. Ibrahim is the guy who talks about all the useless features in the No, no, the soft, <laughs> the soft nicer things in life. Yeah. So, yes. Let's talk about uh, one one more thing, yeah? mm -hmm. which is uh, this being based on the D-Max. Yes. For me, the driving feel it's perfect. It has ample power, a very good gearbox and uh, power to power delivery to the wheels is quite good as well but i feel the suspension is a bit harsh compared to other pickup based SUVs that we have reviewed in the market right in yeah. the market yeah right coming now. from from the terra i want to agree that this one feels a little bit harsh it's it's quite harsh yes it's the terra harsh. was a bit smoother uh, but either way there is an advantage to this and a disadvantage so there is a discomfort when you're driving it when it comes to off-road cred or cabby i think that is where this car shines 100 percent that is what it does and i want to put my money on it against the terror no off-road <laughs> off off-road off you know isuzu has never disappointed when it yes. comes to off-road ability yes. yeah. but uh now let's let's go no, no, but typically yeah. when uh when you're you an off-road car is supposed to have a, a much more firmer a suspension isn't it compared to an on-road car so uh, <laughs> it's not about comfort it's about uh, taking you where you need to be and uh, the, the, the i mean when you get out there you need to feel that uh, it is not too bouncy isn't that, it that is true yeah. that is true but for people like ibrahim mm -hmm. they oh. have they, you know them they, they are pro pro on road however yeah. if you look at the fortuner the everest um these other one the the terra they are a bit more comfortable they are they are not as harsh as off road uh, yeah even even on road uh -huh. they are not as harsh as this one but when it comes to you know drivability and even off-road capabilities you are going to have some fun with lennox mm. off-road and see how he's going to react to the oh, obstacles okay. you are going to tackle mm. anyway I, let's, hope, I hope you have insurance huh? yeah comprehensive <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's talk about something interesting uh, let's talk about uh, the car ownership journey Okay. And and I would like uh, Mr. Lennox to actually share his uh, his ownership journey with us. Which was your first car? We, our family would be really keen. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> my first car was a Toyota Sprinter. Uh, I bought it many years back. Mm -hmm. And that time that it was a 110 and that's the time uh, Toyota Sprinters anyone who had a Sprinter you are on it. Yeah? So that was my first car. Uh, then uh, stayed with it for about uh, say three four years then i upgraded to a toyota harrier and uh the harrier it was uh, a <laughs> gazler uh, i think it was a uh, almost a three point something liter cc petrol and uh one thing about it is that uh, one day i almost slept on the road uh, because of uh, the fact that uh, you know when importers import cars in fact a good number of vehicles there that are usually imported as second hand you find the mileage has been wound back so someone will wind it back because they want to sell the car to you at a higher price because they only say at, at, uh, attribute lower mileage to a higher price in terms of uh, what you're buying so if you don't know you don't know how to check for that mileage so i did buy a car uh, i didn't know the, the mileage was wound back and uh, i think at that time it was around 40,000 kilometers when i bought it later one i mean one uh, friday afternoon i'm driving in town then the car just stops by itself i'm wondering what happened later is when i got to know that the timing belt had snapped now you can imagine uh, because for that car after every hundred thousand kilometers you're supposed to replace the timing belt but uh, since i never checked and I, I didn't know that there was an option to check uh, as I was driving, it just snapped and power went off and uh, the car st stopped. So it had to, we had, I mean, we had to take the car for, for repairs, opening the engine, putting a new timing belt. But the catch is this, you pay a lot of money for a low mileage car, then you get one that actually was not a low mileage, just yeah. because the mileage was on back. 
it's not a good thing and uh, for that reason actually uh, working with uh, the, the, the asset finance structure that we have within the group uh, if you look at this uh, website we have called Kaduka Kaduka yes. is everything about cars anything and everything about cars you want to buy a car you want to sell you want to partic participate in an auction free desktop valuation you want to buy parts at a highly discounted uh, rates so that's a reason why we ended up setting up um, Kaduka one feature that we had to include on Kaduka was mileage verification so today anyone who goes to Kaduka that is www.kaduka.com and you just uh, click on the link uh, showing verify mileage it will take you to another website called QRS JP who are the the company that does uh, inspection for pre-shipment inspection yeah. you key in your chassis number you'll be able to get to know the pre-inspection mileage that the car came out from the port of origin with and that then protects you from experiencing what I experienced <laughs> I was just imagining if I was, I was in the middle of the bush with my family at night, at at night, night. and there's no network yeah. I would have spent the whole night there <laughs> we are going to have a series of two tests one will uh, test the power uh -huh. and the amount of flex that this uh, chassis can handle for low okay then uh, we lock the diff Now we have the, the diff is locked and we are in follow. Uh -huh. ABS is off. Uh -huh. So we start. I hope Ibrahim has not had lunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, 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 this is a small challenge for the UMX. I believe it's going to be fantastic. I, I, I'm curious to see how it will go over those stones there. I think that's where we know how. Which ones? These ones or those ones? These ones. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> 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 At least uh, Mr. Lennox is not scared yet. Not yet. Not yet. So we have one more challenge. One more. <laughs> now let's get to another thing. If, if I'm buying the MUX today, yes. this car, it mm -hmm. will set me back around uh, 9.6 million Kenya shillings. We're going to talk about that more when we do value for money. But uh, as as a as a businessman, I need you know i need to i cannot use all my money and put all my eggs in one basket let's talk about asset finance and ncba and also uh the other the other add-ons that you have even uh, i was speaking to somebody from your bank and they told me that uh, you also have something on sustainability as well yes so i'll start with uh, asset finance so as everyone knows uh ncba is a home of asset finance yeah. Uh, market leaders in asset finance. Uh, we say uh, three in every one in every three vehicles out there uh, that are financed have been actually financed by NCBA. So that's how big and uh, vast uh, our market share is. Uh, been in business for more than 65 years, um, and over that period of time, we've been able to put in uh, a proposition that is very compelling to the market. So, just a bit about uh, asset finance before I get to sustainability is that. Uh, NCBA Bank is the only bank today that has a digital portal if you want to initiate your application. Uh, you just go to the NCBA Bank uh, website, uh, go to Asset Finance, apply for Asset Finance. Very few, three to four easy steps. Uh, fill in the, uh, the online form, attach a few documents and immediately you, when you, when you press the send button, you get an approval in principle an approval in principle subject to your credit score yeah. uh, immediately as an SMS on your on your uh, phone and that is a testament that uh, we are the first test in terms of being able to get back to you uh, on whether or not you're giving you funding for for um, an asset finance facility uh, that said uh, in addition to that uh, we always say within 15 seconds is when you get uh, uh, the notification so the fastest in the market so in addition to that the flexibility of being able to originate an application online so for you if as you're driving 
had uh, you, I'm sure on your phone you have your ID you have your pin and maybe your bank uh, I, I hope it's NCB has sent you your, <laughs> your, your last bank statement yeah just uh, and, and and your pin as well just by uploading uh, those documents as you're driving uh, you'll just get a notification that you have an approval in principle huh. yes that's that's interesting good now on sustainability um, we, as NCB we, we we are very uh, keen about how uh, we, we operate in the environment and the markets that we work in we, and uh, one of the things that uh, we've done is that we've come up with sustainability commitments uh, we understand that the license to to operate in the markets that you operate is uh, is determined by the market uh, the, 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 the people on the market uh, uh, environment that we work in and for us we have to ensure that uh, we, we make sure we Whatever it is that we do is in line with ensuring that we, 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 we sustainably um, take care of the environment. So, so we set aside two billion towards uh, customers who would like to acquire uh, electric vehicles, and uh, that is available. The first bank that uh, took that bold ambition, and uh, in addition to that, uh, we've also uh, just to ensure that we create, we, we, and we, we support our customers uh, during transition. Uh, uh, into into green and sustainable uh, financing solutions. Uh, we've committed to mobilize and steer about 30 billion shillings towards that initiative. And that is to help our customers transition into sustainable form of uh, uh, e economic activities. Uh, now this one tests how agile this vehicle is. Mm -hmm. uh, so are you guys ready? Yes. It's too easy. 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 Too 450 newton meters of torque. 450. Yeah, 450. You you know that's the same as a uh, 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 Land Cruiser ZX. Yes. Is 460 newton meters. So 10 newton meters short of uh, ZX. Yes. Quite powerful. I mean, uh, the comparable, comparable, not even comparable. Bigger uh, cars out there have a uh, then lower torque than these cars. And, the, and it's diesel, yeah? It's diesel, yeah, it's diesel. Very. No, diesels have lower end torque, and especially with the variable geometry turbos. Okay. So it's it's something that uh, diesel heads can really appreciate because mm -hmm. before before we used to have the fixed geometry turbos and the rotary pump, but with the common rail direct injection, mm -hmm. it means the engine is more fuel economical yes. and also more power. So how many kilometers to the liter? Uh, this one, if you drive uh, properly mm. without doing the things you are doing, yes. it, can, <laughs> it can push, uh, say, 14, 13 there oh. uh, combined. That's quite efficient. It's huh? very, very, very efficient. Uh. Yeah, so today we are going to have a team score. Definitely, we need <laughs> Mr. Mr. Lennox. <laughs> I, I want to know how you do it, then I will also give my. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, so I will start because uh -huh. today we are not having Buga to speak. <laughs> <laughs> So today, uh, for what this car has to offer, Okabi, um, uh, coming from the Terra before, uh, I feel this car has some very nice advantages. One of them is the off-road power. I feel the challenges that we had on the other cars that we've reviewed on the same platform that shares, uh, the, the, the SUVs that share with the pickup. I feel this car is more capable of road. I feel it has very good credibility when it comes to tackling difficult scenarios. So on that one, I'm very confident with this car too. Um, it's 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 the tech inside this car is awesome. Um, the only thing I'm missing out is the 360 or Kabi up on Bele. I don't have the camera. Yes, yeah. the camera. Okay. I, I wish uh -huh. they had that one. Uh -huh. Plus again the front camera, the spotter camera for off-road challenge. Okay, when you're when you're sending up. Yes, okay. Yes. Okay, it that has to that show you the front. Mm -hmm. But based with that, I think I'll still be comfortable giving this car a 9.5 in terms of reliability ease of maintenance the cost of spare parts will be there readily available and the off-road capability i'm a guy if i buy this car na ipeleka ushago na ipeleka <laughs> off-road i am not struggling on road i i guy i buy another car that i can use for on road so this one will be purely for adventure okay 
you know, since today Mr. Lennox will grace the, you know, the, the session yes. by ending it. Uh, for me, I'll give this car a 9.7 out of 10. Wow. Uh, the reason why I'm giving it a 9.7 is that it has the, the reliability of a D-Max. Uh, the same chassis that the D-Max has, the ease of maintenance of a D-Max, but uh, the luxury of, you know, a, a, a modern SUV. SUV yeah. I'm not so keen on aesthetics. For me, as long as it's powerful, it can drive, it's reliable, it can do well off-road, I love the car. But uh, sitting in this and uh, sitting in the other uh, pickup based SUVs that we have had on this channel it's it has an upper hand so for me I'll give it a 9.7 it will lose the 0 0.3 because uh, again when you are growing up the teachers would not give us a hundred percent on compositions <laughs> on, on composition so it, it would get to 49 out of 50 yes yeah so at least I'm a bit generous so I don't know Bonalelox so so for me i may not want to rate it for obvious reasons i, I am conflicted by <laughs> my many partners that i <laughs> deal with out there yeah uh, but what i can say it's a very practical car i love practical cars and uh, it's a car that you will not sleep on the in the bush yes because of the the, the way it has handled the ascent the descent and the rough terrains uh and i don't think it's just an an upcountry car. This is yes. a practical car that you can also use it to go to the office uh, yes. comfortably. Uh, I, I, the torque on it is, is quite powerful, so you can still use it both on, on road and off road, yes. in town and, and out of town. So for me, it's a fantastic and a practical car. Uh, rating, I do not want to rate it because uh, obviously I don't want to be too biased, <laughs> but it's a fantastic car. The okay. interior, it's a family car as well. Yes. Uh, is it a seven-seater? Yes, it's a seven-seater. Yes. It is a seven-seater as well. Mm. So every feature of, I mean, it has every feature that you need, one, as a, as a, as a family car, number two, as a, a off-road car when you're going for those uh, difficult uh, expeditions off-road. Number three, one that you can use in town pretty comfortably. So so anyone with a family will be a good candidate for such a car. Anyone who's an, an executive or a middle um, uh, to, to senior level management in an organization is a practical car for you. And uh, even that farmer who now wants um, luxury outside the pickup, the D-Max, still a very comfortable car for you. Okay. And I believe the boot space can carry a few goats and cows. <laughs> <laughs> now, the cow would be a bit of ambitious. Now, now, now that you see even camels fitting in some yes. guys. <laughs> so, Ibrahim, yes. we are going to have... Uh, what, what? Let's have this challenge. Yes. What uh, What team score do you think Lennox would have given this car? <laughs> so, the one you'll give yes. and the one I'll give, we are going to split it into two and get the average, then that will be Lennox. Let's <laughs> the comments is made. Yes. I think it's going for 9.5. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, based on the cars he has owned. Yes. <laughs> I think you would give it a 9. A 9. <laughs> so now let's do a 9.5. Plus 9. Plus 9 divided by 2. 9.25. So 9.25. Ah, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. I, I think beyond a 9.25. Yes. So it's beyond that. So. Uh, I, as I've said, I, I still want to keep off uh, rating it, but yes. it's, it's a fantastic car. Oh, Actually, I've never thought that it has these kind of capabilities. And uh, as 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 uh, Ibrahim has said, uh, the one thing that is missing is the front camera. Yes. Because when you are climbing there, yes, uh, you couldn't literally see where you're going. Exactly. No, and that, <laughs> so, that's... so I'm I'm sure you're familiar with the route, assuming you didn't know what was ahead. So that is the only thing that maybe it's, a, it's feedback we can give uh, Isuzu yes. to, to just put a camera so that when your bonnet is up there, you can at least see what is underneath it. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. that, and that's, 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 that's very good feedback. Mm. He's, Lennox is definitely an enthusiast. Nice. <laughs> I should tag him along for the Elgon Challenge. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> if Isuzu East Africa gives us this car, yeah. we can borrow Mr. Lennox for three days. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, take you to the hotel good. Yes. Can anyway, you do value for money? let's do value for money. Okay. okay. Let's talk about value for money. Now, if you're buying the new MUX from Isuzu East Africa, if you choose to get the 1.9 liter variant, it will set you back around 8 million Kenya shillings. But if you choose to buy the holy grail of the MUX, the one with the 3 liter uh, 4JJ3 TCX, it will set you back 
around 9.6 million Kenya shillings. But now the, the difference between the base model and the top trim in the Kenyan market is quite significant. But anyway, if you're buying it uh, as a keeper's car then or as an enthusiast car, the one the, the top trim will make uh, economic sense and part of the uh, you know part of the unique selling points of this car is that it's very stylish it's very luxurious compared to other competitors it's also very capable when it comes to off-road the other unique selling point and the one that resonates around cost of ownership is that it's very very easy to maintain isuzu east africa has made it very 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 economical to own either the mux or the d max because genuine parts are very 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 well priced well let's talk about competition now it's priced towards the same level as the other competitors so they are within the same price range but in what aspects does the, does the mux win one of them is reliability fuel economy luxury uh, the, the trendiness and also last but not least or even my favorite point when it comes to four-wheel drive vehicles is the four-wheel drive capabilities of the isuzu mux so it's it's a car that will be able to give you the combined cocktail a perfect blend of a car that will take you off-road and a car that you will live with even if you live in town and before i sign out guys please remember to visit our website that will enable you uh, buy or sell a car in the easiest way possible and that is auto select by conversations www.conversations.africa and you'll be able maybe to sell your car very quickly and uh, for that money you'll be for the price you will get because you can get really good prices at auto select uh, you can upgrade and get to buy this because for me, if I'm buying the MUX, and I'll repeat this, I'll buy the three liter version. To me, it makes more sense having this car, both in terms of reliability and also when I want to go for that adventure. I've been your host, Eric Okabi, Eric with the CK. Remember, uh, we value your feedback at Conversations. So do tell us, what, would, uh, what do you think about the MUX? Which one would you go for? The 1.9 liter or the three liter variant? Also, where do you think it stands as uh, compared to the competing pickup based mid sized SUVs. I've been your host, Eric Okabi, Eric with a CK. Follow me at a personal level on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also TikTok. And we value your feedback at Conversation. So, to Ambie, to Ambie, to part which other pickup based uh, SUV haven't we brought to you? Uh, we might be bringing the new Fortuner soon as well. So tell us which other one do you want to see on our socials, conversations on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. I hope this has been an insightful and alluring yet palatable review. <laughs>